Hey folks, Chili here from Design Files. In today's video, we're just gonna do a quick overview of the product libraries that are available to you within the Moodboard software and how you can use these libraries to quickly source products and build out your designs. So the two libraries that are available to you are the main product library. This is the one that comes with your Design Files account and it has close to 2 million products in it. And then you also have your own personal product library. So if there are specific vendors that you love sourcing from, there's images that you found online, you can add all of those product images to your personal product library and build up a curated list of products that you can use for all future projects. But first let's talk a little bit about the main product library that is available to you within your design files account. So within this library, like I said, it's got close to 2 million products in it. And if you wanted to just use it to quickly source items, you could just add in a keyword. So let's say I want to look for a coffee table. I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard and then it's going to load in all the options that are available to you from all the brands that have already been added to the design file system. And then you can pull any of these out to add them into your designs. So you would just click and drag and pull it out to your mood board. Now for any of the items that you do drag out onto your mood board, whenever you have this item selected in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see that there is a product details panel. And if you click the button to view details, that's going to show you all the information for this product. It's also going to show any additional product images that you can also add to your designs. And of course it also includes a shop link. So you could actually just jump right over to the vendor site if you want to look and see if there's any extra information or if you just want to place an order. Now I'm going to delete this one, but um, for any of the items that you are browsing through in this library, if the item has little arrows on either side, that also means that you can see the additional product images here. So you can pull out the one that's best going to suit your design. You also have the ability to just uh, see larger images if you want to, and then it'll also show you the product name and the price. And of course you can close this down and go back to the main view here. Now you also can filter down by vendor. So if you wanted to do that, you would just select the vendor and here you can also filter down by price. But if you prefer to just go straight into a vendor's collection, you can jump over to the vendor tab right here. And then you're going to see all of the vendors that have been added to the design file system. And then you can just browse through, you can click into any of these guys, and then you'll be able to just filter down to their collection and, uh, basically browse that. So if I just wanted to look for visual comfort chandeliers, then I would just put in chandelier here, hit enter. It's going to narrow down to just their chandelier products. And again, I could filter that further by price. Um, one last thing that I'll bring to your attention for the vendors tab. Um, if you wanted to scroll all the way down here, you're going to see that you have the ability to choose which vendors are going to show in this list. So if there's certain vendors you want to exclude, just click this link at the bottom and then you'll see these check marks. So you can actually just uncheck any of the uh, vendors that you don't want to show within this library and then scroll down to the bottom and hit save. And then it'll only show the brands that you want. Now, aside from the main products tab and the vendors tab, you also get your own personal product library. So if the vendors that we show here are not the vendors that you typically source products from, that's totally fine. We completely understand that every designer has their own preferred brands. So we want to make sure that you're able to add whatever items you want to your designs. And the way you can do that is by having your own personal product library. And there's two ways that you can upload images to your library. One, there's an upload option right here. So if you have uh, images of products saved to your computer, you would just select the files from your computer. You can give the uh, product a name. You can include the product description, the price, the vendor, the source link. You can include all the information you want. You can even add additional product images as well. And once you've saved the item to your library, it's going to show over here like this. And if I scroll down here, let me just see if I've got one that has additional product images here. So you can see here, I've got additional product images for this one, uh, also for this uh, tab here. So you can just pull out the version that's best gonna fit into your design. Um, the other way that you can actually upload images into your personal product library is by using the Design Files product clipper. So if you haven't added the Design Files product clipper to your account yet, you definitely wanna do that because it's gonna save you a load of time when sourcing products. Essentially, it's a tool that's gonna allow you to go to any vendor site and if you click to add this item to your design files account by clicking on your clipper in the uh, top right hand corner of your browser, you're going to see the clipper expand 
and then you can collect all the product images and all the product information and you can save this item directly to your library so that you can use it for any future project. Now, your personal library is also broken down into three different categories. So you've got your main library here and essentially your main library is where you would want to add any items, any product images um, for items that you plan on using for multiple client projects, right? So this is where you could build up a curated library of all your preferred brands that you want to use over and over again. And when you add those items into your main library, you're going to see that you can actually narrow down uh, by project. You could narrow down by vendor. You can narrow down by category. So if you are adding, let me just edit the price and details here. So let's say that I grabbed this particular chair from a vendor site. And when I was adding all the product information, I actually gave it a category. So I added it to armchairs and maybe I even added tags, right? If you add categories and tags when you're adding items to your design files account, that means that you can then filter by that. So if I wanted to just browse all the armchairs that I've added, then I could do that. And it's just going to show me all of those armchairs. And if I actually wanted to filter down by a tag, maybe I kind of added the farmhouse tag for style, then I could actually search for farmhouse and it's going to show me all the items I've listed under that farmhouse tag. So it's a great way to keep your product library really clean and organized so you can quickly find items for all future projects. So there's a variety of different ways that you can filter down your main product library. And then over here, you're going to see that you also have a separate category for just project items. Now, what's cool about this is that if you have items that are just going to be used for a specific client project, you can upload those items here. So this could be images of their current furniture and decor. It could be for any sort of one-off item that you know you're only going to be using for this client project. And you just want to have that curated list of all the items you're going to use for this client. So you can build up that library as well. And then over here, you also have your assets. Now your assets, this is where you're going to add any sort of graphic elements. It could be images of your logo. It could be uh, divider lines like this, any sort of graphic element that you want to use to enhance your mood board designs. Um, it could also be images of your client space, uh, floor plans, any sort of renderings, anything like that, you would add it to your assets. And the reason I say you would want to add it here is because anything that's added to your assets, it's not going to show in your product list when you add it to your design board. So it means that you can keep your product list clean for just the products that you're recommending to your client without seeing something like your logo showing here. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I think that about covers it. Um, but if you are building out your mood board designs and you know you're going to be adding, you know, thousands of products to your design files account as you make your way through your projects, you definitely want to think about your personal library and which areas you're going to be saving items to. Your main library, this is where you want to add something that you're, you could possibly use over and over again for multiple client projects. Your project items, that's where you're going to upload something that is specific to that project. And your assets is where you're going to add anything that is just kind of like a graphic element or something that you don't want to show within your product list, but you do want to include it within your design board. And of course, be sure to check out the main product library that's already available to you because it'll probably save you a ton of time when it comes to sourcing because you can browse products, oh, close to 2 million products from a variety of different vendors all at once. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to cut it off there, but if you have any questions about using the product library within design files, then feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help and thanks for watching.